Tonight, we learn how to tap into your brain's potential. And we meet three whiz kids who've just returned to the UAE as mathematics champions. And Chef Paul Divisa prepares homemade bread pudding with sweet cream sauce. Sweet! This is Studio One. Feeling festive in Dubai. You're watching Studio One, and for those celebrating Christmas at the moment, well, we hope you had a very, very merry one. And for those gearing up for the best New Year's ever, this week on Studio One, our aim is to, well, keep the festive mood going as we count down to 2012. Yes, just six more days, and we'll have a whole new year of excitement, hopes, and resolutions. Now, I don't know about you, but every year I make a bunch of resolutions, like at least 10 of them, and I can hardly keep up with any. Mm. I'm just so typical. Let's give it a go, yeah. you know, right? you know. Yeah. Just past January the 2nd, at least, anyway, <laughs> something like that. Uh, now, we want to know what all of you out there are hoping to achieve in 2012. And of course, you can rely on Studio One to be reminding you about them in the early months and early weeks of January as well, right here on Studio One. Yes, and by now, we're pretty sure that you know how to get in touch with us. But just in case you forgot, here's how. Studio One is here to make you happy. And to make sure that happens, we need your thoughts on the show. Send us an email to studio1 at dmi.a with your comments. Poke us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash studio one live to tell us you love us. Or perhaps you'd rather tweet. Go to twitter.com forward slash studio one live to tell us what you think of tonight's show. Or why not make that call and leave your message on our audience response line? That's 056 680 1018. However you choose to do it, just make sure you get in touch because your wishes are our command. Well, maybe. Time now to check in with Paul, who's here, preparing a, well, a festive pudding for us. All the best. Uh, happy Boxing Day. Do you have Boxing Day over in Holland or not? We have uh, Second Christmas Day in Holland, yeah. We don't second, Christ yeah. second Christmas so Day. Second Christmas Day. one's not get, good enough. You yeah, have we got two. plus one, exactly. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing Boxing Day has got nothing to do with the actual sport, Nothing right? to do with... No, I, it, it dates back. I could, I could give you all a history lesson there. Um, no, I'd, I'm more interested in the pudding he's yeah, preparing today, right. actually. Now, ordinarily... <laughs> Well, certainly, uh, back in the UK, we'd have a Christmas pudding that, well, most people can't, they can't stomach Christmas pudding on Christmas Day because they've had so much Christmas lunch, so they usually have it on, on Boxing Day, but you're not going to do a Christmas pudding for it. You're going to do a, a more modern take on it. We, we just do it a little bit different today, exactly. <laughs> Normally, you know, Boxing Day, what I do, I actually do nothing, you know, <laughs> that's, that's the best way to do it, take out, whatever, easy. But today we're going to make a nice, fantastic little bread pudding, bread and butter pudding, uh, with some raisins, uh, some apple, cinnamon, vanilla, beautiful mm -hmm. combination. Very okay. nice, easy so this to do. Is the, this is dangerous, this is dangerous, because <laughs> yeah. I could be having flashbacks very soon, you know. It's Boxing Day, it's a time of festivity, and you're taking me back to my school days. Bread and butter pudding. Is this a very common preference uh, during Christmas? Is it, is it made every Christmas religiously? Uh, not, not from, from, not around our neck of the woods, but we're, we're, we're happy to have a take on this. It's very European, it's very traditional pudding. Okay. Uh, okay. And it's very bad for you, and it's uh -huh. full of all sorts of bad stuff. But that's what festive is all like about. Sounds like something exactly. I'd love to dive into. Anyways, why don't you start off by telling us how you're going to prepare it? How I'm going to prepare. So for the bread and butter pudding itself, uh, I'm going to boil the milk with the cream and the sugar, dry out the bread in the oven because it's better if you dry it out completely. So because then when you soak it again in the milk, it so doesn't get too So when you when you say you dry it out, yeah. How, but well, how is Dry that it out, <laughs> put it in the oven, 150 or 180 degrees, just leave it in there for about 5-10 minutes till it's nice and crisp. Make like a little crouton if you want. And the other thing to remember about this, I don't know about you, I don't know if it's a chef -y thing, stale bread. You know how you get loads of stale bread in the yeah. bread bin that goes off? Perfect for this pudding. Stale bread for the Christmas? Bale bread. Stale bread. You don't okay. want to use fresh. Stale bread for Old Christmas. Old bread. It's the way to do it. All right. Just leave it outside for okay. three weeks or something okay, like that, so then so use it. Okay, so there's the stale bread the apple and the rest of the ingredients and everything goes into the oven everything we mix everything we boil everything first then everything goes in the oven bake it off about uh, 150 degrees mm -hmm. for about 40 minutes mm -hmm. 
Then make the sweet cream sauce with uh, heavy cream sugar. Again, nice, lots of mm -hmm. sugar, very good. <laughs> Vanilla, some eggs, fresh eggs, and that one we make here, all in a minute, and it's a beautiful sweet cream mm -hmm. sauce. And you can make your own variety of it, because you can add other ingredients in there, but I'll show you the basic ones, so mm -hmm. the one that you can use, and you can do everything with that. And is it always green apple that you use for this one? For this one, yes, because I prefer it. It has a nice, for me, it has a better flavor. It's a little, a little fresher than the other mm -hmm. apples. All right. I'm willing to see. I mean, obviously, ordinarily, I'd have it with custard, but sweet cream sauce? <laughs> Game Sweet for, cream sauce, game custard, same, same or different, as you say. Okay. okay, cool. We'll let you get on with that because looking forward to this one is just what we need on a day like this, yeah. of course. So, Paul, we'll catch up with you throughout the show. The recipe for this delicious bread pudding is available on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash Studio One Live. Now, time for a break, but we will be back to talk neuroscience and learn more about the untapped potential of the brain. And later, we'll be meeting three mathematical whiz kids who've returned to the UAE as the world champions. See you in a few. Uh, welcome back to Studio One. Now, our next guest has transformed the lives of many UAE students as an educator and school leader with 14 years' experience. Tony Roney discovered that too many children fail to fulfill their true potential. Now, through her Brain and Learning Center, she helps people to address both their learning problems and tap into their, their learning potential. Pune is here, of course, to tell us more about it. Pune, thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you for having me. I mean, it is the holiday season, but we should not let the kids forget about the academics, of course. No, definitely <laughs> not. All right, so why don't you start off by telling us what your center offers? Um, as a teacher, I used to teach secondary school mathematics, and I, every year I had students who were very, very good at maths and others who really hated it. They fell into two distinct categories. I would fall into the second yeah. category. <laughs> and, I <felt, laughs> and I felt like people are almost proud to tell me that they're not necessarily good at maths, and we accepted that. We put them in that pigeonhole when we accepted that was the case. Um, but I felt that there was more to be done, and one of the things I did is I tried to find out more about what neuroscience said about our potential and what we can do to increase that. Um, so I did a course at Harvard which was looking at bringing the neuroscience into the classroom and uh, affecting learners and a direct result of that was setting up my center the brain and learning here in Dubai and we do brain training which is basically doing one-to-one -one intensive and targeted exercises a bit like uh, a personal trainer would do with you in the gym to try and get you fit we do that to make the brain of students fit. So we start by doing an assessment mm -hmm. to find out where the weaknesses lie and really address those. But in terms of the students that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that you teach, that you train, etc., are these all students with learning difficulties? Is that, is that, is, is that part of the they criteria? They fall, I think, into two main categories. Some who come to us with a specific <coughs> diagnosis, so they may be dyslexic or they have dyscalculia or have um, ADHD or pro problems with their attention. Um, and others where the parents and their teachers feel that they're falling in a category that they're not reaching their full potential. Sometimes parents say, oh, my child's just a bit lazy. Yeah. Maybe they're not doing the best they can. And almost certainly there is always a reason why a child procrastinates, they're putting off their schoolwork or not doing their best. And that usually is because of underlying cognitive difficulties. I'm a little interested to know about this assessment process. Mm -hmm. How do you diagnose what the problem really is? I'm actually not qualified to make a diagnosis, mm -hmm. but basically the program that we have is a research-based program uh, that's from the US. It's designed by Dr. Ken Gibson. And the test that we use is called the Gibson test. It looks at the seven key areas that make up intelligence. Uh, we, we call it a screener, so it's not set in stone, but it gives us a very good idea of where the difficulties may be. Uh, it's done on a computer, so we say to the parents to sell it to the children as um, some fun brain exercises mm -hmm. rather than an assessment so that they can come and truly engage and show where their um, strengths and weaknesses lie. Mm -hmm. And when you say uh, you train them, what sort of uh, training is it? I mean, it's... it's so the, uh, the, altogether, there are 24 different exercises we use. So if you imagine like you go to the gym and there are lots of different machines and each of them does different things. So for example, one does your biceps, one does your triceps. Depending on go your goals about fitness and what your problem areas are, you would use different ones to achieve a goal. We pretty much do the same thing. So for example, a lot of the exercises that we do one-to-one -one with the students may be focusing on improving their attention and concentration, or maybe they're helping uh, improve their working memory 
or the way they handle the sounds, which is what they need for reading ability and spelling. So it depends on what the child's difficulties are. And then we do these um, exercises. And the way we create change is by creating a mental sweat. So it's very similar to being in the gym and getting to that uh, <laughs> feeling that you're really sweating it out, we want them to have in the hour that they're with us, reach a point of mental sweat, and that's how their brain starts rewiring itself permanently. You, know, you mentioned uh, about Dr. Ken Gibson, mm -hmm. uh, a copy of his book, uh, of course, that you brought in. If you'd like to find out more about this, some more practical advice, then of course you can get mm -hmm. on to the Brain and Learning website, brainandlearning.com, to find out more. Uh, but equally, uh, I mean, tell us about what the sort of practical advice for parents out there who think that maybe their child has a learning difficulty. Are there things that they can do at home to help boost yeah, brain power? Definitely there are specific things that we all can do to, brain, uh, to boost brain power, but have, if you're trying to overcome a very specific learning difficulty, unfortunately at the moment the only thing that can be done is really to do equivalent of brain training exercises that are intensive and targeting that problem area. But talking about a more general approach to um, boosting brain power, some of the things that can be done, for example, is number one, I would say, understanding how the brain works. There's a very, very good book by Professor John Medina called Brain Rules, mm. which looks at how we can maximize and optimize the use of our brain in every situation, whether it's in the classroom, at home, or at work. Uh, so I think that's a really good book for parents and learners to read. Um, other things that can be done is really getting ourselves out of our comfort zone. What yeah. they have found out is that if any time we do something that's not routine, the brain has to create new neural pathways. For example, even brushing your teeth with your left hand if you're right-handed, or um, trying to sort of memorize lyrics to a song, or trying to um, remember a few items that you need to buy instead of writing a to-do list or learning to play a musical instrument. All of those things can be really useful mm. in terms of helping mm. uh, maintain and make our brain more fit. Mm. Some good tips, uh, useful advice. Uh, and as we mentioned a little earlier on, thebrainandlearning.com. That's Pune's website. You can get yourself over there, find out a little more about what she has to offer and some more of that practical advice as well available from the Brook. Thanks so much for being here. It's My a fascinating pleasure. Thank subject. Great to Thank you, Thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, for setting up the centre. Yes. About to uh, approach your first birthday with the centre, That's right, right yeah. yeah. In January is our first birthday. And is this yeah. just for kids or can adults enroll as well? No, actually we have our first two adults starting in January so okay. it can work for all people right, of any age. Come back in January no, that tell us about good. that. <laughs> okay, we'll Thanks do. so much for meeting you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we're off to a break now but first, well I think it's time to head over there to see how Paul's getting on with his bread and butter. Uh, how is it all going chef? Everything going? How, uh, is the bread stale enough? Beautiful. <laughs> the good. bread is nice and hard. Good. That's the way what you want. So what I have right now, I got the milk uh, and the butter in here, boiling, beautiful, nicely done. This is all uh, the whole eggs uh, with the cinnamon, some sugar in there, um, a little pinch of salt in there. So what we want to do is just pretty much put the hot milk with the butter in here, mix it up. And the reason to keep mixing is because you, you, you're trying to avoid, because you can have problems, can't you, with eggs? and Well, hot, hot. yeah, definitely. If you, have, if you have raw egg and you put a boiling material mm -hmm. in there, uh, mm -hmm. if your egg gets, uh, gets cooked immediately, you get little particles in there, you mm -hmm. don't want to have that. So yeah. mm -hmm. what you want to do, you, you want to add it slowly, bit mm -hmm. by bit, and then keep on mixing so you, you know, temperature, mm -hmm. you, do, you spread okay. out the temperature mm -hmm. and it's just a little mm -hmm. bit better. So then what we have, uh, some raisins. So we're going to add some raisins in there. Mm. Just so cut up some apple already. Mm. Put some apple in there. Are you going to use any cinnamon? Cinnamon is inside the way. Okay. Cinnamon powder. We only use. I only use powder. You can use the sticks if you want to, but yeah, it's not really nice to eat later on okay. or to take it out. <laughs> then what you want to do? Just add the bread in there. So just dry bread. Just put it in the oven. Mm. And then what you want to do? Just mix it all in there. Wow. Set it for about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Let it soak all the way through. Mm -hmm. Then take a little spring form, or if you have at home a little bit uh, like a cake pan, yeah. it, all, it all depends. <coughs> if you want to make a bigger one, no problem. It's, I use a small one. Mm. After 30 minutes, add it in there. Mm. Bake it off at 150 degrees. That's it. Okay, oh, to, so to set it, you just leave it mm. in there. You don't refrigerate it. Just leave anything. it. Leave it outside. Mm -hmm. Let it set for 30 minutes so everything gets soaked up nicely. Mm -hmm. That's it. Looks good. Uh, everything under control here. I don't know. What's the difference between a sultana and a raisin? You know? Good question. Maybe people out there know, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they can do Maybe, maybe they can text it in. <laughs> <laughs> they must be or maybe we'll ask the whiz kids when they come oh on next. Yeah. Yes, anyway. <laughs> we'll be back in a couple of minutes to meet the UAE's young geniuses who will probably put Tom to shame. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> plus, stay tuned to see how Paul's bread pud comes on when we get back and put the pressure on.
Welcome back. You're watching to Studio One. Happy festive period to all those that are celebrating now. Mm. What? Seven, seven times nine. <laughs> Tom, oh. just, just get on with it, all right? No, I know, but I'm in exactly the same. I wouldn't. You could tell me anything, and I would just agree, probably. Seven times nine. I'll let you a little think about it. Six. Because right now we're joined by three UF, UAE mathematics whiz kids who will know the answer to that question and also have a great reason to celebrate this Christmas as they've just returned to the Emirates victorious. Together they beat 5,500 students from 41 nations to be ranked world champions at the 17th International Abacus and Mental Arithmetic Competition. And to tell us more about the rigorous selection process and training these kids had to go through, we're also joined by Sundari Raj, who's the Managing Director of UC Mass. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Now let me introduce everyone. We're going to talk to uh, Mr. Raj very shortly. But first, let's uh, hear from the students as well. Aditya, Gayatri and Kareem, thank you for being with us. All okay? <laughs> Can you help us? What was it? Seven nines, is it? Seven nines Seven are times nine is what? 63. Thank you very much. I, I said 60, so I was close. Oh, I was 60. Oh, okay. so I was going to say three. <laughs> um, thank you very much indeed for uh, agreeing to be with us. Can you ex explain a little bit about the selection process that saw these three go off to Kuala Lumpur and become world champions? There are 25 centers all over the UAE. There are uh, more than 6,000 students they were writing the selection examination in all the centers in the UAE, and 1,500 were selected for national level competition. Out of 1,500, 66 were selected to go to international competition in Malaysia. And these are the three world champions, three world as you were wow, already congratulations. told. congratulations. Now, um, is this center open for everyone, or is it only for kids of a certain level? It is only for the kids from four to 15 years, mm -hmm. yes. No, I mean, even ac uh, academic uh, excellence-wise, is it open to no, everyone? No, no, no. We believe in the fact that all children are genius. Mm -hmm. Our job is to discover the genius within themselves. Mm -hmm. That's all. And do you just deal with mathematics, or are there other disciplines and other skills? No. Instead of mathematics, I'll be happy if you use the word arithmetic. Arithmetic. Okay. Yes. So we, it is skill development program. Mainly, we train their brain. It's a brain development program. Yeah. We train their brain in order to mm. uh, realize their hidden potential. Mm. And, and uh, they become self-motivated, self-reliant because of that. Okay. And this training will mostly help them in arithmetic or also in the other subjects? You see, there are many, I mean, uh, um, the skills we develop, starting from concentration and listening and photographic memory, then uh, mm. uh, speed and accuracy. Cool. But only speed and accuracy is the skill we can showcase to the parents, to the world. So that is the reason we conduct the competition. Well, proof is obviously in the pudding here. Uh, we've got three world champions sitting alongside you. Now, Kareem, I want to hear from... How old are you, Kareem? Six. Six? Six. Oh. And you're a world champion <laughs> already. A world champion, the best at maths in the whole wide world. Do you, do you, six feel, years old. Do you feel proud? Do you feel happy that you're a champion? Yeah? You feel good? Yeah. What was the trip like? Did you enjoy being over in Kuala Lumpur? Was it good fun? Yes. Good. <laughs> so cute. Gayatri sitting alongside. How old are you, Gayatri? I'm 13. 13. Another world champion. And what was the experience like traveling with friends over to Kuala Lumpur? It was different and new. As I traveled unaccompanied, it was a new challenge for me. I got to meet many other kids. So, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. On the whole, it was nice. Okay. And Aditya, when you went for this competition, did you think you would make it? Were you confident? I was confident for the uh, for the other positions, but not for the champions. Really? Okay, and, and, and what is it like right now? Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> You're still not over it, are you? Yeah. What's the reaction been like since returning here to the UAE? Obviously, you're here on Studio One. What's it, what have your friends been saying to you there? Uh, you're famous. Famous oh. now. Especially <laughs> after this show, you definitely are, my friend. <laughs> and then tell me a little more about, obviously, we've just heard about the training and the selection process. Was it hard work getting to be in the final team? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, mm. hard work. Okay, I'm going to do a little activity with you guys. Just okay, I have this book from the center. From yeah. It's called uh, The Abacus Mental Arithmetic, and I'm going to ask them just random calculations. And I'll start off with you, Kareem. Are you ready? Are you up for this challenge? 
uh, not Kuala Lumpur, but Dubai Studio One Studio. Good? Good to go? We just have All to right. put one thing here, though, because unfortunately we don't have trophies as large no as trophies. that to give everyone... We, we will give you bread pudding, though. We'll give you yeah? some pudding. All right, only if you answer correctly. Are you ready, Kareem? Okay, how much is 1 plus 4, 9, 6, 3 is equal to? 23. <gasps> no. <laughs> no, you didn't just say that. Did he just say that? It is. It says 23. I feel like I've got even lost in the question. I don't oh. know how that, uh, all right, now this is for you two. Uh, we'll start with you, Gayatri. How much is 76 plus 80, 59, 31, 74? 320. 320. <laughs> 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 he said 320. He said it even before you. <laughs> okay, I am amazed. I am embarrassed of myself, and I'm uh, amazed of you kids. Congratulations. Uh, look at that one. <laughs> uh, Adichet, yeah. tell me about... The process, because we always hear, and I was told by my, 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 my teachers, that practice makes perfect. Do you have to practice these skills? Yeah, you, you have to. And how do you do that? Just repetition, 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 <coughs> or always? Mm, we get some sets of sheets. Yep. You have to practice those. Mm -hmm. In eight minutes, you have to finish. Uh, it's different level. Me and Kareem had to finish 150 questions in eight minutes. Huh? Yeah. He finished 150 questions in eight minutes? Okay. She had, to finish, uh, she had to finish 200 questions. Wow. Okay. And what's oh. the preparation? Like, do you put in a lot of your hours in a day so that you can be prepared for this competition? I, my, me personally, put one and a half hours. Mm. Not one and a half hours? <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, you are the world champions. You've got the trophies to prove it as well. What's next, then? When's the next big competition, and how can people find out more about enrolling themselves? We have a national competition normally at the end of October or November first week every year. Okay. Before that, we do selection process. But the international competition will be definitely in December every year. December every year. Okay, yes. so if people want to find out a little more about the courses, about uh, the training, then get yourself onto the website. It's ucmassuae.com. That's ucmassuae.com. And, I mean, is there any point, Ash and I? Uh, you know, any point Tom, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have asked that question in the is first place. Is there any point at all? <laughs> is there any hope <laughs> no. for us at all? No, 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 no. Not at all. Not See, at all. Okay. the brain develops uh, from the age of 4 oh, uh, to oh. 12, <laughs> maximum uh, 16. So there's no hope. Above, that, see, above no. that, no, so, so that means we have there no chance, no basically. I no talk hope. about development. All right. Growth is there for everybody. Okay. Brain development takes place up to this maximum, 80%. Most mm. people. Guys, thanks so much indeed for being with us. Thank you for Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah, uh, being with us on the sofa. And congratulations on being world yes. champions. Yes. And well stay back you. for some bread pudding because you got all the answers right. Pudding <laughs> time. You. Chef Paul has 60 seconds left. What I've done for now is when you bake the, the bread pudding, you just finish it off. So what you want to do is you just put it in at, at home. You put it even in the microwave for about 30 seconds or you just put it in the oven 100 degrees just to heat it up. Because when it's warm, it's just better to eat. So that's nice and warm. That one we put right there. Wow. Then for the sweet cream, what I've done is I put the eggs inside, put the sugar, everything in there, mix it with the eggs and again slowly put it back on the fire. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you make it, everything you get a straight line with your spatula. So that means that all your eggs are cooked properly, but not too far, so you get all the pieces in there. 20 seconds, chef. 20 seconds, fantastic. So throw it in the strainer. Everything you see, there's no pieces in there. Everything is good. So that's it. And then what you want to do, take a spoon. <laughs> Ooh, and then nice, nice and warm. Ooh. That's it. There we go. Time is up. Red so pudding, that, sweet cream sauce. That is a Paul de Visa special. <laughs> Look at that. You could not. Thank you very much mm -hmm. indeed. All oh, his childhood memories come running back now. Now, as I get now stuck before into we it. before we taste that, Chef Paul, how much is five times five? Twenty-five. Oh, not bad. Not bad, eh? The last a tougher one. Tom, why don't you go next? No, it's good. <laughs> really good. Mm. That that is worthy of the of the of the of the. Of the Festive period. It's holidays and that is a holiday. Is, is that a mm. Boxing Day dessert or is that a Boxing Day dessert? Problem is. That is a smashing dessert. Yeah. That's all I know. It's Problem amazing. is, I think we're going to need a few more spoons actually um, because yeah. there's a lot to go around. But um, that mm. is a very, very good pudding and I'm not a pudding man. So thank you very much. Uh, that's it for tonight. Check us out tomorrow because we have a fabulous performance from singer songwriter Gayatri. And in case you're feeling it, we learn how to resolve the holiday blues. Make sure you don't miss that. Uh, join us tomorrow at 7.30. Until then, bye-bye. Come on, guys.